JFK, please, I said to the cab driver. I sat in a yellow cab to the airport. It was almost five in the evening. Finally, the movers had left. And I had surrendered the keys to my Tribeca apartment. My new job offer had come through, with only one brief call with Neil as an interview. Given. John's recommendation, Neil said this was a formality and more a welcome to Hong Kong call. Human Resources sent me a new offer. Given the high rents in Hong Kong, they added a housing. Allowance of $60,000 a year to my base salary. I had decided to quit and go back to West Delhi with a zero salary. Maybe I would have. Yielded to my mother's badgering about getting married. I should have been serving tea and mythion. Trays to prospective grooms. Instead, I had a welcome brochure from the Goldman Sachs Asia Pacific. Relocation group in my hand. I might not have love in my life, but I did have Uncle Goldman Sachs. Taking care of me. The brochure said I would be staying at the Shangri-La Hotel in Hong Kong until I found a new apartment. The cab passed the Tweed Courthouse near the Manhattan side entrance to the Brooklyn Bridge. From a distance, I could see the skyscrapers of the financial district. Even though I had wanted to get out of New York at the earliest, I felt a tinge of regret. I had become attached to the city. Of my firsts, first job, first boyfriend, first independent home and, well, first breakup. Could you stop here for a second, please? I said as the cab reached the bridge. The driver slowed down the cab. Can I walk across the bridge? You can meet me on the other side. The entire bridge? That will take you half an hour. I have time. Can I have your number? He gave me a business card with his name and number. I am gonna have to keep the meter on, he said, chewing gum. Sure, I will call you when I reach the other side. I stepped out of the taxi and climbed the steps up to the pedestrian walkway of the bridge. The Brooklyn Bridge is an old cable state cum suspension bridge in New York City. Completed in 1883, it connects the boroughs of Manhattan and Brooklyn by spanning the East River. Around a mile long, it has a pedestrian walkway in the middle, above the automobile lanes. If you have seen movies set in New York, you would have probably seen scenic shots of the Brooklyn Bridge. I began my walk. The orange-colored sky at sunset and Manhattan skyline on my left seemed like a perfect last memory of the city. The peak hour traffic passed below me. I noticed that the bridge with its trusses resembled the Howrah Bridge in Kolkata. Pain singed my heart, Kolkata reminded me of debut. I had told myself to not think of him. That's what sucks about love. It takes away your control over your thoughts. Any trigger, anything that somehow could be connected back to debut would spark a fire of memories inside me. I just wanted my last walk in the city to be peaceful. Alas, no such luck. I approached Brooklyn. I wondered if Debut would be home already. Or if the tattooed white girl would be waiting for him. One of his roommates had told Avinash, who then told me that the girl was a waitress at Chipotle, a Mexican fast food chain. I didn't ask further. I wondered if he loved her so much that he never thought of me. Or did he miss me? Focus on the walk, breathe, I told myself. Why doesn't the brain listen once in a while? Why? Can't it just take in the beautiful view? Isn't it the brain's job to figure out a way to avoid pain? So, why is it only generating thoughts that kill me? I reached the midpoint of the bridge. Tourists took pictures of the panoramic scenery. I took out my phone to take a last snapshot of New York as well. After I clicked the picture, I opened my WhatsApp. I don't know why I did it, but I checked Debut's profile. 
he had the same picture as always of him posing next to the lake in Central Park. He was online. I took a deep breath, typed hi and pressed send. He read my message but didn't respond. I didn't want him to think I was chasing him again. I typed another message. I am leaving New York. You know the most annoying thing in the world? When it says typing on WhatsApp but then the typing vanishes. I have a cab waiting. Debut, say what you have to say fast, please, I said in my head. Good came his response. Could he be any meaner? So okay, I had barged into his apartment. I had even entered his bedroom. Sure, he was mad at me. But did he realize that the person he'd lived with for two years was leaving the city, the country, or even the continent? I meant I am leaving now. On my way to the airport. He then did another mean thing you can do on WhatsApp. He sent me a thumbs up smiley. Who? Made that stupid smiley? What the fuck is that thumbs up supposed to mean? Like an idiot I continued to send message after message. All in the hope of a scrap of emotion. Or validation. This man had the ability to make me feel wretched in seconds. I am moving to Hong Kong. Great. More money for you, I hope. Really? He had to say that? I decided to ignore his snide comment. So I am leaving New York forever, I said. I meant, I love you so much, this is what I have to do to get over you. And I am so lonely and scared, can you please say something nice before I go to a strange country, I beg you. He did not respond for a minute. I checked the time. I had to reach the other end soon. I sent him another message to prompt him to respond. Just wanted to let you know. No chance of me bothering you now, I guess, I said. I am groveling now. At least say something nice. Thank you for that. This way you can achieve your goals. And I can find someone caring, he said. That hurt. I gripped my phone tight to prevent my fingers from typing again. I like to humiliate myself, but I guess I had to set limits on how much. No more, I said to myself. I took a deep breath. On an impulse, I tossed my phone into the east. River. Tourists around me gasped in disbelief as I tossed a working iPhone into the water. The next minute I felt stupid. However, it ensured I didn't have a phone on me for the next few hours. Particularly at the airport. Of course, I could have simply deleted his contact. However, that wouldn't stop me from expecting him to respond or from checking my phone every two minutes. No, I had to toss that humiliation device into the river. People with little emotional self-control must take drastic steps. I resumed my walk towards Brooklyn. As I stared at the wooden pathway, a question crossed my mind. Damn, how will I reach the cab driver without my phone? I did manage to find the taxi by borrowing a tourist's phone and using the card the driver gave me. In 20 minutes, we reached JFK Airport. Terminal 7 please, Cathay Pacific, I said to the driver as we approached the airport. Driveway. I checked in and waited to board in the Cathay Pacific lounge. A part of me felt glad I had lost. My phone. If I didn't I would be calling debut right now. I thought about his curt responses. Couldn't. He have said, all the best, baby. I am sorry it ended this way? He could have even sent a let's be. In touch. I still care about you. Was I so horrible? Was he so relieved to be rid of me? Lost in these thoughts, I boarded the Cafe Pacific plane with its dark green interiors. I sat in. 
The plush business class seat, courtesy of my bank, the only one in the world that seemed to care about me. A pretty Chinese girl in a fitted red Chongsam dress came up to me. She offered me a glass of champagne. I declined. I had no reason to celebrate. I looked out the window as the plane started to taxi for its long 16-hour flight. My eyes filled with tears. I felt lost in my luxurious surroundings. Too sad to stay. Too sad to leave. Perhaps this is how it will be from now, I thought. I will remain. Sad forever. The plane took off. I continued to cry as New York became smaller and smaller in my window. The flight attendant noticed my tears. After the seatbelt signs went off, she came up to me with a hot towel and tissues. I used the hot towel to wipe my face. The heat felt nice on my skin. Thank you, I said. Would you like to eat something, ma'am, she said. I shook my head. Maybe just the starter? We also have a lovely carrot and ginger soup. I nodded. She pulled out my tray table and placed a white cloth on it. She took another cloth. Napkin and placed it on my lap. She brought me a tray of food. It contained fresh salad, soup and brown bread. I had not eaten all day. I finished everything on my tray. Later, she offered a raspberry pudding for dessert. After I ate it all up she brought me hot peppermint tea. I enjoyed her full attention. Is this the kind of wife men want? Ready for bed, she said. I nodded. She adjusted my seat and converted it into a flat bed. She placed a white sheet and pillow on it. As I lay down, she draped a quilt over me. I realized something. Debut wasn't the only one. I also wanted someone like this lady to take care of me. Why can't women get a wife?